back at main camp and the weather's not been great so I think in light of that we might as well just have a little look at uh, what's in my bag and what I carry every single day and why. Firstly, uh, before we have a look at my everyday bag, um, just have a little bit of think, think about the mindset of someone who works in the outdoors every single day and the sorts of things you'd expect to find in here. Okay, hopefully other things that are going to be in here. Things like some sort of way to weatherproof yourself or get out of the elements, carrying water, um, maybe some food, you know, some way to heat the water, just the absolute basics. So let's have a little look. The bag itself is a, um, I think it, I believe it's an electronics bag, so like a laptop bag. It's made by a company called Targus. Um, I just happened to notice uh, it, it was something that we had in our household anyway, and I liked the fact that it had a waterproof lining on the inside. I was attracted to the fact that it wasn't covered in camouflage. Okay, so being an ex-military bod, you tend to get a bit tired of that sort of stuff. Most notably, something right on the front of it here is the HVB patch. Now, bit of a bit of a thing with these. You can't buy them. We don't sell them in, in the shop online on our website. They have to be earned. You have to come here, be part of this, come on a course, come and get involved in some of the conservation based activities we have here, you know, shifting wood chip, planting trees, whatever it is, to earn one. That's kind of pretty much how it goes. Or you need to be making such a contribution to our wider community and the outdoor community or well-being that, uh, that it warrants, warrants earning one. So there we go. Everybody likes a good uh, way of getting hold of these tiny little uh, zip, what do you call these, these zips. Most of these bags come with one of these little lanyards on them. Um, this one came off, so I felt the need to replace it with a poppy. Again, being a serviceman and having served in various places, it's important to me that I'm, I'm kind of showing that. For me, remembrance is every single day. Right, let's start with the main component, the main compartment. Wow, okay, first thing that comes out, in Britain, with the weather we have and the unpredictability in any given day, it could be snowing, raining, freezing, cold, northerly winds, and then by afternoon you could end up with sunshine, you know, and you might as well be by the beach. You just don't know up here in, in our part of the Northern Hemisphere. So to that end, I've always got with me a really quick and easy go-to, and that's the poncho. Now this is an American style poncho, as I pull this out. Okay, and this is made by a company called Helicon. Um, you'll notice all of the, uh, the, uh, the, the little um, guide ropes on here. Okay, that's so that if I need to, I can quickly turn it into a shelter. True story, I have in fact spent uh, three nights and four days under this thing um, when I did a little bit of a confirmation of skills test down on the south coast. I spent four days and three nights without any water and no sleeping bag just going through all the skills, making sure I use the right type of wood at the right time. I found my water source and I was in that cycle of pure filtering, purifying, keeping myself afloat, foraging as well. So this was essential at that time. The way these things work, it's very simple, is you've got a hood in the middle here and you literally throw the whole thing over yourself and your day sack. So that's why this for me is a winner because it's so quick to just throw on and it protects all of you. You haven't got to then worry about a separate waterproof for your day sack as well. With a lot of these things, the weather never tends to stay for any serious amount of time here in the UK. You'll get the worst of it out of the way. This will get shaken back off, put back in its waterproof bag and, and away again. And I can just crack on with whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing. So I'll just put this very quickly away in here. Now we'll put a link up for, uh, for these and there's a number of places you can buy these, okay? So have a look below and you'll see that. Okay, what else is in here? Right, so the next item that, that just comes to mind here is, and part of my layer system, as I will have spoken about on, on one of our other videos, my personal everyday carry, you know, just the clothing that I have with me, I will have mentioned or made reference to merino wool. Really, really important. It's an absolutely amazing fabric. Um, okay, and it prevents you from smelling like a footballer's jock strap after, you know, one, two, maybe three days in the woods. Okay, this is really, really good. A lot of the time it's impregnated with silver as well to give it that antibacterial properties. And uh, yeah, just, it's just a, a go-to. Keeps me warm, 
This is the layer that is closest to my skin. I then have the lamb's wool or Shetland wool, and then I've got my Nerona organic cotton jacket on the outside of that. So the whole thing breathes. What else have we got in here? Ah, the little black book. Okay, so my little black book. Um, this goes everywhere with me. This is when I'm attending meetings. This is when I'm sitting down with clients, discussing the requirements for a micro adventure, or whether I maybe just have an idea and I've got to put pen to paper because again, I know my short term memory is not great. and I need to maybe hold on to something. I'll just quickly put it in there. Observations of the natural world as well. I might spot something or some animal behavior or something going on and just quickly make a note of it to maybe research it later. Never gonna stop learning in this environment. You're never gonna know everything. So having a book, a little book like that to sketch something or write something down, is really important. Okay, I've got my Nalgene bottle. This holds pretty much three quarters of a litre, not quite a full litre, which is ideal because obviously that's saving me weight as well. This, remember, this is just my bag for the day to day. This isn't my micro adventure bag. Okay, so there's enough in there for me to make a cup of tea and be drinking, having sips of water throughout the working day. Coupled with that is a good old fashioned jet boil. Okay, another little story. I won this in a competition, uh, in a chefing competition in the Marines. Okay, it was a field catering competition. Um, judges must have been drunk or something, but I won that day and, uh, and I got given a, uh, a jet ball. But inside of that, I'll just lay this out for you to see. Okay. I've got my Millbank bag. If you're not familiar with the Millbank bag, definitely Google these and have a little look. They've been used in the British military for absolutely years and years. It's very simple, okay? It's a very, very tightly woven, specially tightly woven uh, material, which you pass water through the inside of like a giant sock, okay? And this is to act as a filter. It doesn't necessarily purify, it just acts as your primary filter. It weighs about the same as carrying a sock, okay, in your kit. It scrunches up nice and small. Again, we'll put a link to one of these somewhere in, in, in below. Um, inside of here, okay, oh, what have we got here? So this thing operates on gas. 90% of the year, this would be fine. It's only in the depths of winter that gas can let you down. And this is the isopro. So it's the, it's the mix between uh, isobutane and propane. It's the mixture between the two, which I think is, is quite a winner actually. And this one's made by MSR. So I've got the small can, because that fits inside here. And then on the bottom of the jet boil, I've got the actual burner piece, okay? And that clicks on underneath, then the can underneath that. So the whole thing fits back inside itself, which is really rather handy. So I'll just put that back. So we've got that on the table. or will lay that down so you can see it, hopefully. What else have we got in here? Okay, so the axe. The axe I tend to carry, um, the kind of, <laughs> the one I use as an all-rounder, uh, is either going to be my Swedish carving axe, okay, my Gransfjord's Swedish carving axe, or it's going to be, or it's going to be um, my small forest axe. Today it just happens to be Swedish carving axe because I'm on the hunt for a new Kuxa cup and I would need this to start roughing it out. Okay, so this is great. Haha, -ha, now here's something we've just done a video on. So it uh, doesn't need too much, too much of an intro but it's my knife, it's my everyday working knife, okay? And it's the, the Brekfer HVB collaboration knife. This is the knife that we produced ourselves. Uh, absolutely exquisite in the hands, incredible balance, uh, and the knife I use every single day. Just pop that back in the sheath. Oh, that is exciting. Right. And of course, along with your ax and your knife is your saw, okay? So I tend to use the Laplander saw Okay, and what's great about these are the fact that they're so lightweight, very forgiving mild steel with overly hardened teeth uh, retrofitted. Okay, normally there's a little bright orange lanyard, it's clearly fallen off, um, but these are absolutely fantastic. And again, we're in the early stages of prototyping of developing a sheath for these, so you'll probably be able to find these on our website in coming weeks. <laughs> what else have we got in here? Aha! So, I now have a little book on Stanton Jew and its ancient stone circles. 
Being that one of my roles here is a guide here in the Chew Valley, again, learning about all the historical and ancient monuments is absolutely key in being able to convey the information to the client or the, or the end recipient of that. So it's got all the bits and pieces I need to make sure I don't forget anything. That's pretty much the main compartment. Let's look into the next bit. Titanium racing spoon. Any self-respecting outdoors person is never far from their racing spoon. Okay, so I've gone with the titanium one made by Cita Summit. I'll find a little link to one of those below as well. Okay, the next thing I've got in here <laughs> are several coffee sachets. Okay, these don't break the bank. These are the uh, Maxwell House ones. I think I picked these up at the, uh, the pound shop here in the UK. You can get those boxes of ready-made lattes and things like that. Ideal for use in the outdoors. Just tip it in, simplicity. Make sure you take your rubbish with you. A box of business cards. As I alluded to, I will take this whole bag with me. This is literally my day-to-day, -day, so. If I'm going to a business meeting, I might not have business cards on me. A pack of noodles. Yeah, not an expensive item. But again, should I end up being out a little bit later or I miss a meal timing because I'm doing something, I can just stop, use my jet boil and the water I've got in there to heat these needle noodles through and keep myself ticking over. Okay. Really simple, this is a snood, if you haven't seen, or a buff, if you haven't seen one of these before, okay, it's a tubular piece of lightweight fabric. In the winter, I'll swap this out for a heavy one made of wool, okay. Okay, these go up and stop, prevent uh, heat loss from your neck. Obviously, this time of year, uh, it's pretty warm more often than not, so I haven't got a really thick one. Um, we used to use these on ops, obviously for protecting identity, covering your face, and stopping the dust intake, especially when you're working with fighting vehicles or you're on top of vehicles or around airplanes, helicopters and things, just kicking dust up at you. If you wanna go the whole hog, okay, for those of you who are really into the whole ninja zombie apocalyptic survival thing, what you've gotta do is reach around and grab the back edge, bring this over, and you can pretend to be a real life shinobi ninja, okay? Oh, keep your ears in the game so you can still hear what you're doing and you could be a real life ninja. Probably not. Protection here is going to be my battery pack, which is pretty much essential to any self-respecting modern outdoors person. If you're going to a remote location, it's really important that you tell people where you are, where you're going. You've got some form of communication on you, which everybody pretty much has a mobile phone nowadays. Uh, you might have even downloaded the What Three Words app, okay, which gives you three specific words for that 10 meter grid that, space that you're in at that time. And that's saving a lot of lives right now and is recognized by a lot of our, our 999 and emergency services. So having a battery pack to keep that form of communication up and running is important as well. Um, so I've got this one here. I can't remember who makes this. I'm not amazing with technology. Uh, if I find out, I'll stick it in the link below as well so you can, you can use it. But this generally has a little uh, LED display on here. Okay, so I can tell it's, it's uh, half full right now in terms of its battery life. Um, and I can easily get 14 plus full charges out of this um, using, uh, with, my, with my iPhone. Point to note, this is also normally in a waterproof bag, but as I ran out the kitchen this morning, I've clearly forgotten that bag. It's still next to the charging point. Electrics and water don't mix. Ah, yes, now, highly technical piece of equipment, the pencil. Why carry a pencil? Um, because if your bag ends up in the river and everything gets wet or for whatever reason, pe pens fail, pencils don't. As long as you've got a, a knife in your pocket, you can keep this thing sharp and up and running, okay, for scribbling bits and pieces, that pretty much goes with the book. That's that compartment, and then we're moving on to these two side pouches and this piece in the middle. goes without saying the world we're living in right now everybody's carrying one of these okay the other thing this doubles up as obviously is fire lighter thinking about 
in an outdoor context this stuff burns incredibly well okay so you can use this as an accelerant just to help your little fire along so having some of it is not a bad idea because we are getting more and more support more and more people are coming and helping us out um, i've got a pack of these in here to dish out for those who are deserving <laughs> and have earned them through blood sweat and tears very important getting caught short in the outdoors <laughs> having to dig yourself a little cat hole in the middle of the woods if you can't get to a composting toilet is having a pack of tissues just like a cereal bar i'm the sort of person that gets hungry quite often so having snacks is quite key cereal bar what's inside this side pouch okay a few extra tools decent set of um, ply bull nose pliers okay interestingly with the wire cutter in there as well i'm forever having to mend or repair fences or boundaries so these are really really handy to take up the tension uh, when when your hands just not, are not enough the other thing i've got in here is uh, a high quality set of garden secateurs admittedly probably do with coating with a bit of oil a little bit of rust happening there um, but these generally these two items sit in the side pouch if i'm clearing pathways or if i'm mending fences or you know general duties jobs these are ideal over to the other side ah coffee bags i've really taken to um Carrying coffee in the field is becoming a bit of a thing. I've seen all sorts out there. I've seen people with aero presses. I've seen people lugging full-blown cafetiers and bags because they insist that's the way it needs to be. I'm actually pretty sold on these little coffee bags. Um, this company, Taylors of Harrogate, okay, are here. This was a, a trial one I got my hands on. Um, there are a lot of good companies out there. Uh, in particular, I'd like to mention Contact Coffee, okay, the, the veteran-owned brand. Those guys are doing battle bags really really good check them out any ideas what this is the speciality item anybody know okay no i'll tell you okay so these are also known as fish spreaders right for spreading the mouth of a fish carrying a fish okay and these actually work in conjunction with the nalgene bottle and what i do when this is red hot is i put those inside and i can then lift my bottle up off of the fire so the way this works Okay, these go down inside the lip, hook on there, and then I can pick up my water bottle if it's red hot and it's just come off the fire. I would undo the lid, take the lid away, because this is plastic and would obviously melt. Uh, if I was gonna use this to boil water over the fire, and then what I do is use the fish spreaders to pick this up and move it about. So that's the fish spreaders. And that concludes today's session of what's in my bag. That's my everyday carry. Um, for me as, a, as an instructor in, in Great Britain, living and working pretty much three minute drive away in, up in the village, working down here in the woods uh, and, and around the surrounding Chew Valley. If I'm gonna be doing something where I'm, I'm forward mounting into a more remote location, I'm probably gonna be using my other bag, which is my micro adventure bag, which I've put together uh, and we'll definitely be doing a video on at some point. That's far more in depth uh, and allows me to pretty much live out of the thing for like a week at a time. Thanks for watching. If you've liked what you've seen today, please make sure you subscribe, tell your friends, and hit the like button. Mmm, bum scratch. Oh, it's a hard life, Tilly. <laughs>